Shadows Blood Fear The Morag Tong and the Dark Brotherhood Where there are nobles, rulers, and power struggles, there are assassins. Tamriel is certainly no different, and much of its history is marked by the machinations of assassins and the mysterious guilds focused on assassinations. There have been two principal groups, or guilds, of assassins in the history of Tamriel, the Morag Tong and the Dark Brotherhood. While the Morag Tong came first, the Dark Brotherhood rose to far greater prominence across the continent. This video will go over the rise and fall of the Morag Tong, the origin of the Dark Brotherhood, and the work the two groups have done. There have of course been assassinations of rulers, and political figures for as long as history has been recorded in Tamriel. Practically every race has been involved in the death of an opposing individual or been a victim of such a killing. From the Bosmer's killing of the High King of the Nords to the numerous assassinations of Imperial Emperors, there have always been illegal and unsanctioned murders. The Morag Tong, however, were the first group to be officially recognized and sanctioned by a governmental body. It's believed that the Morag Tong was founded by the Daedric Prince Mephala in order to teach the Chimer people how to evade and destroy their adversaries. As Mephala is considered one of the good Daedra by the Chimer, the Morag Tong and their acts were legalized by the government of Morrowind and mostly operated out of that region. The Morag Tong was mostly allowed to operate in order to avoid the houses of Morrowind from going into all-out war instead using operatives in the shadows to keep each other in check. The guild would hand out a writ of execution to one of their agents, clearing them of any legal issues with the work they carry out. Despite only being legally sanctioned in Morrowind, agents of the Morag Tong would also trek across Tamriel for certain jobs, such as killing the potentate of the Cyrodiilic Empire in his palace and elsewhere. The Morag Tong would continue to operate for centuries, mostly in Morrowind, until the eruption of the Red Mountain in the Fourth Era. This event caused a tremendous upheaval across Morrowind, and made the island of Vardenfell uninhabitable for some time. The Morag Tong dissolved in the aftermath, but by the second century of the Fourth Era, it seems they've reformed once again. The other guild of assassins, much more widespread across Tamriel, is the Dark Brotherhood. The Brotherhood actually started as an offshoot of the Morag Tong, although exactly when they started operating and why they split away from the Morag Tong is debatable. The popular theory is that the followers of the Morag Tong worshipped Mephala, but when the tribunal achieved godlike power in Morrowind, Vivek replaced Mephala for many Dunmer. It's certainly plausible then that many in the Morag Tong began worshipping Vivek, while some broke away in order to continue serving Mephala. Other theories claim that Sithis himself spoke to a member of the Morag Tong in order to create a separate group that worshipped him instead. Or that the Dark Brotherhood was an offshoot of the Thieves' Guild rather than the Morag Tong. Regardless, the Dark Brotherhood has been operating across Tamriel since the Second Era, and has been led by a mysterious individual known as the Night Mother. According to the beliefs of the Dark Brotherhood, the Night Mother was the wife of Sithis, the eternal godlike spirit representing chaos and the void. The Night Mother birthed five children with Sithis, but was then told to kill all five of them to honor Sithis, and so she did. There are numerous theories, reports, and rumors based around the Night Mother, and whether or not she was a real person or simply a title for the leader of the assassins. It would seem that both the Morag Tong and the Dark Brotherhood use the term Might Mother to represent their leader, but it's generally more associated with the Brotherhood. Some claim that the Night Mother is an aspect of the Daedric Prince Mephala, or a former member of the Thieves' Guild, or a lady that lived in Cyrodiil during the Second Era and would become known as the Lucky Old Lady. What we do know is that underneath the statue of the Lucky Old Lady in Bravil, is a tomb containing the remains of a female adult and five children.
The spirit of the Night Mother remained in this tomb until her remains were eventually brought to Skyrim in the Fourth Era. The Dark Brotherhood operates as much as a business as they do a cult, and their reputation is widespread across Tamriel. Those that wish to hire the Brotherhood for an assassination must first complete a ritual known as the Black Sacrament. The ritual involves creating an effigy of the intended victim using human organs and body parts and calling out to the Night Mother to send her children. The Night Mother apparently hears these pleas and passes them on to a certain individual known as the Listener, the head of the actual ruling body of the Brotherhood. The Listener passes this on to one of the Speakers, who then pass the order to one of the Assassins of the Guild. The Night Mother may also pass on her separate demands, which the Order carries out to appease Sithis. The Brotherhood would also occasionally recruit new members to their organization by keeping an eye out for those that demonstrate an aptitude for assassination. They have a number of hideouts and headquarters across Tamriel, known as Sanctuaries, and had influence at the highest level of the political factions. Although not legally sanctioned like the Morag Tong, the Brotherhood continues to operate mostly out of fear and mutual benefit. Since the Oblivion Crisis at the end of the Third Era, however, the Dark Brotherhood has been in decline and have been rooted out of Cyrodiil. With the Dark Brotherhood greatly reduced in influence and power, and the Morag Tong potentially rebounding, there may be an upheaval in the state of assassins in the future. From religious fanatics to skillful killers and political players, the two major guilds of assassins have had a large impact on the history of Tamriel. For the majority of the Elder Scrolls games, players have had the option of joining one of these guilds, rising through the ranks and committing a number of murders. While some may think there is a sense of dichotomy in having the great hero of a game also be a shady assassin, that hasn't stopped plenty of players from enjoying the pursuits of death and darkness.